objectively, you know, you, you might have analysts or you can have people that have just worked with um, probabilities or subject matter a lot, and they just basically come up with ideas, come up with what they think is reasonable. Um, and I have, believe it or not, I've run into this several times. The, um, <coughs> one of the things I work on is the flow of pathogens through a hospital. Well, it's very hard to come up with probabilities that a pathogen, like MRSA, goes from colonizing your skin to becoming an infection, right? If you swab someone and you discover MRSA, you can't just leave them. You can't just say, oh, well, great, now we can step back and figure out what probability they have of actually becoming infected with MRSA. This, well, that hopefully is obvious, it's rather unethical. Um, so, you basically have to make sure that the people working with this, infection control officers, surgeons, doctors, uh, believe the probabilities involved. And there are measures. I mean, you, you get certain measures, but for the most part, the only thing you can work with is subjective probabilities because actually finding the uh, uh, objective probabilities would be uh, problem upon. <coughs> so does it make sense why we have to have it? Believe it or not, just injecting some form of probability is sometimes quite useful. Because at the very least, you're explicitly saying that you don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially the opposite tack of where you build everything on the average of what you expect. When you build everything, like for instance, if you build the number of beds in a hospital based only on the average flow of patients, you're going to run out of beds periodically, right? Because of the variability. Well. Similarly, just coming up with probabilities for things that happen, even if you're just <coughs> pulling them out of your hat, um, can be helpful, just in terms of the robustness of your decision making. So here we have one set of such probabilities, and let me ask you, what, do those, what two laws do these probabilities have to satisfy? Give me one of them. Probabilities must add up to one. Could we have um, a probability of say minus five? No. You have to have non-negative probabilities, and so that those two requirements, non-negative probabilities adding up to one, force all of them to be between zero and one. Um, and that's pretty much all you need. So the laws of probabilities are that the probability of any event defined here must be between 0 and 1. And an event is a collection of sample points. So you can define pretty much anything that happens as an event. It can be the probability that a stock uh, rises above 200. It can be the probability that you get five hurricanes hitting Texas in the next year. Uh, I mean, these are all events that you can calculate probabilities for. Now, the probability of such an event essentially takes one set in the sample space and assigns a number between 0 and 1 inclusive. So this is a function. It takes something as input and spits out a number, which is the definition of a function. Now the, uh, the, the notation here just means that the event E is an element of omega, the sample space, and that means that the probability of E is somewhere between 0 and 1 inclusive. The second point, of course, is that if you add up the probabilities of all those sample points, which is the same thing as adding up all the probabilities of non-overlapping events, then you're always going to get one. Otherwise, you've, you've missed something. So let's look at a few probabilities from our recurring example. If M is the event that our is profitable, then you can literally list the sample points for that satisfied, right? The first one here is positive. Doesn't matter if columns is probable or not. And you can take each of these probabilities and add them up to get the probability that Mark, uh, Markley is profitable, 70%. Similarly, you can calculate the probability that columns is profitable, 48%. Having started with the uh, probability structure, 
we need to calculate other things. Uh, specifically, complements, unions, joint probabilities, as well as uh, the difference between mutually exclusive and independent events. <coughs> so here we have the um, complement of an event. And we also use S sometimes for the same thing. This is a Venn diagram where the probability of event A is represented by the ratio of the area of this thing to the area of the entire sample space. So just looking at this, which is more likely, A or not A? Not A. Not A, right? So the probability of A has to be something less than 50%. Um, in addition to that superscript of C, um, I'll sometimes write a tilde like this, so not A, like that. <coughs> and um, the Venn diagram is actually remarkably useful terms of visualizing probability, but I know that not everybody likes them, so we're going to look at tables of probability.